Hello, everyone. So good to see you, beautiful people. Welcome. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you for joining me today on day six of our Taste for Truth Weight Loss Bible Study. I am so excited that you are here. I'm happy that you chose to join me today. And again, we're going to have some good discussion. I mean, this has really been impactful these last five days. Very thought-provoking, um, very challenging. I hope it has been for you. I know it has been for me. And so today, even more challenging. Today, we're actually going to start doing some work. So before I jump into our um, study for today, I need you to make sure that you subscribe to the channel right below this video click the red subscribe button subscribe to the channel it takes you a few seconds again because you don't want to miss out on our discussions that we're having every day and next to the subscribe button is a little bell I need you to click that and the reason why is because it notifies you whenever a new video is posted okay so here we are day number six of our taste for truth weight loss Bible study I'm jumping right in with my comments Today's title of today's reading was the scary first step, that scary first step. And many of us know what that's like. When we start on a new adventure, when we start on a new journey, the first step is always the hardest. The first step is always the most challenging. And so I want to start with this statement right here. And if you catch it, write it down because it will change your life. Here it is. The first step to getting anywhere is deciding you are no longer willing to stay where you are. Did you hear that? The first step to getting anywhere is making a decision that you are no longer willing to stay where you are. When we get tired of being sick and tired, we'll start making steps towards change. Did you hear that? When you get tired of being sick, and I mean physically, emotionally, spiritually, and mentally sick. When you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, you'll start making the necessary changes so that you can have the change that you most desire and want in your life. And so we've been talking a lot the last few days about boundaries and the importance of them. But I want to add one more thing to that. I know that I've said over the last few days and even in the readings that you've read, the author has even said that boundaries are not meant to harm us. The boundaries that are put in place are there to protect us, to keep us safe, to keep us healthy, um, and to give us a prosperous life. But I want to add this truth to that. Not only are boundaries there to protect us and keep us safe, but boundaries are an act of love. Boundaries say, I love me and I respect me. And when there is a lack of boundaries in our life, what we're ultimately saying is that we don't have any respect and we don't have any love for ourselves. It's kind of like when you're in a relationship um, with someone and that person hurts you. At that point in the relationship, you set boundaries because if you don't, you teach people how to treat you. So the same is true with ourselves. If we don't set boundaries in our life, we are literally mistreating ourselves. We're not loving ourselves. We're, we're, um, we're doing harm to our physical bodies, the bodies that God has blessed us with. We are not honoring him because we won't allow ourselves to set some boundaries to protect ourselves. And so, so it is with food. When we neglect to set boundaries with food, guess what? Food becomes our master. We become the slave. And we let it control us versus us controlling it. And once food begins to control our life, it sets us up for failure and it harms us. And so when you're physically doing harm to your body, when you're physically doing harm to yourself, you're not showing yourself that you love yourself. 
you're not showing yourself that you have any respect for yourself. And so we have to get to the place where we start setting some healthy boundaries. We have to start doing it. We have to set healthy boundaries that align with how much we value ourselves. Now, I can't tell you how much you value you. You can't tell me how much I value me. But depending upon the type of boundaries we set in our life when it comes to our health, it shows how much you value your life. So you have to start being consciously aware of not only setting the boundaries, but displaying and demonstrating how much you value your life. Listen, you only get one. You get one body. You can't trade it in for a newer model. All you can do is go in every now and then for a tune-up. And so if you value your life and your body and your health, if you are thankful and grateful that God has given you this life, then why wouldn't you want to do something to protect that life? So um, in the book, John, uh, Barb gave six reasons on why we don't want boundaries. And I want to talk about each one of those reasons quickly. The first reason we don't want boundaries is because we want to eat. We want to eat. We don't we we think we deserve to eat. We think we should always constantly reward ourselves with food. And the reality is is that most times when we want to eat, we don't really need to eat. And this concept of rewarding yourself because you worked out today, watch this, because you worked out one day all week, you deserve to eat a cheeseburger. No, you don't. No, you don't. You have not earned it. And so we have to, again, renew our mind and get out of this concept that we deserve food or that I, I should reward myself with food, or I have to have it. You don't have to have it. You're not going to die if you don't eat a chip. I promise you. The second thing that Barb said was, we want to keep our options open. That, who doesn't want to do that? Well, you know, I don't want to limit myself because what if I want to have a snack you know, what if I want to go out to eat today so I don't want to limit myself? I need to leave my options open. Well, how has that worked out for you? Because leaving your options open, for me, when I've left my options open, all it has caused me to do is gain more weight. Because then I keep making, I keep justifying why I need to eat. So I don't need to leave my options open. Number three, we don't like rules. I talked about that yesterday. We have a spirit of rebellion and rebellious people don't like rules because we don't think we should have to follow them. But again, how is that working out for you? Because for me, when I don't set boundaries for myself, when I don't stick to the rules, when I don't play by the rules, I set myself up for failure and I set myself up to be defeated. Number four, we're afraid of failure. We start thinking in our head, well, what's the point in trying if I'm going to fail anyway? Well, guess what? If you start out thinking you're going to fail, you're probably going to fail. If you don't think that this weight loss Bible study is going to help you, guess what? It probably won't. I'm, I truly believe you get out what you put in. If you sow negativity, you will reap negativity. If you sow positivity, you will reap positivity. And here's, here's I want to read this statement that I wrote down. You are not set free by dotting all of your I's or crossing all of your T's. You are set free by the renewing of your mind. This is not a competition. You are not in competition with yourself. This is about allowing the word of God and the spirit of God to renew your mind and transform you from the inside out. Are you going to fail sometimes? Yes. Are you going to slip up and make mistakes? Yes. It, it's inevitable. It's going to happen. But that doesn't mean you're a failure and it doesn't mean you should quit. It means that you need to pick up and keep moving. That's it. Keep moving and trust that God is working things out for your good. Number five, we want to wait until the next big event. What the heck? Okay, well, I'm going to start, you know, losing weight after the birthday party. I'm going to stop. I'm going to start losing weight after I go to this gala affair. I'm going to start losing weight after Thanksgiving. Guess what? If you are constantly waiting for the next big event, it's going to always be a next big event. 
every month of the year, you can think of a big event on why you should wait to start working on your health. You cannot afford to wait any longer. If you could, you wouldn't be here. We wouldn't be having this conversation. You would not be listening to me. So you can't afford to wait. And number six, we think we can lose weight without setting boundaries. We think we can lose the weight and keep it off without setting boundaries. You can't. The only way that you're going to lose the weight and keep it off is that you have got to put boundaries in place. There are some things that you can and cannot do if you're going to be successful at maintaining a healthy weight, period. Now, there are three scriptures I want to read before I leave you. The first one is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. And I'm reading it from the Amplified Bible, and this is what it says. So then, whatever you eat or drink, do all to the glory of God. So then, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, make sure that you're doing it for the glory of God. I know a lot of times we don't want to involve God when it comes to weight loss, but guess what? God needs to be involved. If you're going to be successful at any aspect of your life, God has to be involved. So regardless, whether you're eating, drinking, exercising, um, this Bible study, whatever you're doing on your job, everything you do, everything you do should be honoring God. And if the foods you are eating do not bring God honor and glory, and you know they're not because you feel guilty after you eat it. If you feel guilty after you eat something, guess what? You did not honor God because God is a God of peace and a God of order. He is not a God of condemnation. So if you feel condemned after you eat, you probably weren't honoring God with your food. The second scripture is 3 John chapter 1 verse 2 from the Amplified Bible and it says beloved I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically just as I know your soul prospers beloved I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically just as I know your soul prospers spiritually it is God's will and his desire that we be blessed in every part of our life, including this one, including our weight. And the last scripture, Exodus 23 and 25, listen to what it says. You must serve only the Lord our God. If you do, I will bless you with food and water and I will protect you from illness. You must serve only the Lord your God and if you do, Food and water will be a blessing and not a curse. Food has become a curse to us because we are not honoring God with our food. We're not serving the Lord with our eating habits. God wants to bless you. He wants you to prosper. He wants you to be healthy. It is not God's will for you to be sick because of food. Please write that down. Make it an affirmation. Put it on a sticky note. Put it on the wall. It is not God's will that I be sick because of food. Okay? So, guess what you're going to do? And I'm done. You are going to write down one boundary. And I'm saying only do one. Because what happens if we try to take on too much at one time and we fail, we end up quitting. But if we try to do one thing, just one thing, I want you to think of one boundary that you can set for yourself for the next few weeks that we're on this journey. Just one. Pick one boundary and stick to it for the next few weeks. That's your assignment. One boundary that you're going to choose as it regards to your eating and your health. And you are going to write that down. And you are going to commit to it for the next few weeks. Okay? That's it. Now, share with me your comments right below this video. What did you get out of today's reading? What did you get from this video? I know the video today went a little bit long. But today was it was packed. And I wanted to make sure that you got um, what you needed from it today. So, share with me right below the video your thoughts, your comments on the video. Or... 
on the reading? What is going to be your takeaway? And guess what? Share with me what your one boundary is going to be. Just one. I just want you to pick one. Share with me what your one boundary is going to be for the next few weeks that you are going to commit to. Because if you say it and you verbalize it, you'll probably stick to it. All right. So I want you to have an amazing day. Enjoy your day. Um, Be blessed. And remember, as I always say, that's my saying on the wall, be patient with yourself. It's a process. Talk to you tomorrow. Have a great day.